are with Hut 8 Mining, and nothing has changed. We pulled back from the uh, $0.96 cent range uh, that we made the move off of from around $0.80, cents. and uh, now we pulled back down to around $0.87 cents right here. Uh, and the next thing I'm looking for is for us to break this previous high, the $0.96, cents, and go to our minimum target at the very least. Um, again, you know, uh, trades like this, they will often go above um, and even to the, the main target the majority of the time fairly quickly. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But this was the minimum target at 103, uh, and we're just waiting to get there. Now, again, this is a trade that's worth about 25% or more. Um, so on a percentage basis, you know, if you're able to get a trade like this and it only takes a week or two or a few days or whatever it might be, um, those are great returns. And I, again, think this is a free money trade. Um, and us hitting this is going to be, it's just very likely. Uh, everything that I went over and calculated and looked at told me that this was the spot, the main spot. Um, again, uh, large, there's a good chance that we're going to go back up to here. It just might take longer is what I would look for. Now going to Bitcoin, we can see Bitcoin is just stuck around this 17K area. And uh, it's really, it's kind of blocked. And it's nothing, it's not showing anything as being uh, one way or the other. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. it you know, uh, it could spike up. Um, and But this is still pretty stiff resistance, this 18K area. So we'll stay. Above that, again, is that 21K. And below that is that 15,800 is where my head short. Uh, target is and then below that is 14,056 and we're just waiting for it and it's just st sticking right here um, so we'll see what happens and how this plays out uh, Ethereum Ethereum is doing the same thing pretty much um, it's a little bit ahead on a percentage basis with it being in the 1263 so that'll be interesting to see what it does as well. Uh, its resistance is right around that 13, 40, 50 area right there. And um, uh, this was a, one of the ones that I really like to possibly break out higher and, and uh, have a little bit more momentum. And it has a little bit more um, action in it, volatility-wise, than Bitcoin. So it could be, a, it's a, one that you it leads the way is what I'm basically saying and then we have XRP which has just been kind of blah instead of holding up a little bit higher it's been actually holding in the, the lower end numbers and very flat uh, but until we get the court case on that I don't expect anything on this one and I'm just basically holding and waiting and waiting um, dollar cost averaging uh, that's what you do in a on ones like these and those are my top three the Bitcoin Ethereum and XRP outside of the trade which the trade is you know my hut 8 mining which is the one that I'm big on now I was asked about some other ones um, going back to silver nothing has changed with silver we're sticking around that 24 you can see right here we did start to make a move down to 23 and then ultimately to the target of uh, around under 21, around 2080. Um, this is kind of key because this pattern is in place and it had a nice move up off of this break from here. So this is very logical before you get continuation upwards. And um, also let's look at uh, Tesla. I've been asked about Tesla and nothing's gonna change in Tesla. Tesla has plenty of downside available to it. It went to the low 100 range. It's 88.6% uh, levels all the way down here in the mid to upper $40 range. And it's extremely overvalued, you know. Um, 
and I talked about this for years now, about how overvalued this one is. Uh, it's just silly. And um, this was going to happen at some point, and it did. And we have this pullback, and you know it's not going to really start getting picked up again until I believe we hit this uh, blue line down here. You know, then it becomes a decent value, and even then it could still go lower and be in a depressed state until. Uh, remember, Tesla has a lot of competition now showing up. It's not like before where they pretty much owned. Uh, but there's a lot of growth in the EV space, so uh, it's not all doom and gloom. It's just they're so overvalued, um, and it was ridiculous numbers that they went up to. There's no way they were going to hold these these numbers up here. This is a more logical area, um, anywhere from the 40s to the uh, up back to uh, maybe 100. But um, yeah, uh, three, four hundred, and that's even higher because they had a stock split. Um, it was just a ridiculous numbers for their, their shares. Um, another one I was asked about was Marathon. Marathon is very much like um, Hut 8. Um, it had a pretty nice percentage move. Let's get to a four hour chart over here off its low when it was down here. And if you see this pattern right here, I liked it very much. You can kind of see it, how it went from here to there. Boom. Draw a line there so I can we'll zoom in as well. Boom. And then another one here on a volume volume basis too. This was near perfect. And you can see that right there. And let's zoom in. Let's do an hour. There we go. And you can see what I'm looking at right here. So you had this move and it, it developed this pattern right here. So this was going to return back above 382 for sure. And it went even higher than that. It filled in its gap right here, um, right around 433. So this too was a, a good trade to have taken on a percentage basis. Um, it you know was higher than um, HUT. HUT is kind of lacking actually, but we'll see. I think HUT will explode back upward. I think it has more upside. This one also has more upside. It could go up to the, the upper $4 range easily and maybe even higher from here. Um, so this is leading to the upside on a percentage basis. So HUT to follow that would not be um, unlikely for if we get an explosion upward uh, at the start of the week come tomorrow. That would be uh, pretty nice and uh, not unlikely to occur. Remember, this is extremely compressed. Um, that's why I'm a, you know, very positive or bullish on this one. Downside is very limited on a percentage basis. This is extremely, I mean, extremely oversold. Um, ones that I don't like, you know, I've been asked about also are ones like crypto.com. I'm staying away from all of the exchanges because I don't know which ones are good and which ones are bad. The only three that I really like are, you know, Coinbase, Binance, and um, BitMEX. I think BitMEX is probably one of the best because uh, they have a long history of, you know, just being solid and stable, which is really all you can go by. Um, after the FTX collapse, it's like, what the hell, man? When, who can you really uh, uh, trust? But anyway, I'll have another video on that. Like I said, um, that's coming. And um, I was asked about, just to throw this in for the one person that asked about the video game skills. Again, I don't really follow these. I know there's like this um, video game slash uh, crypto coin component to this, um, but I don't really follow it. If I was to look at where it could go, um, I believe that this can go all the way back up to the 50, I mean, um, 80 cent range up here, right around that 90 cents, 89, 90 cents. So if it does get a, a, a lift up in the future, don't be surprised. This one is extremely oversold. Let's go to, uh, let's see, a little weak on here so you can see what I'm talking about. 
I mean, this had meteoric, it had big rise all the way up to the $40 range, and now it's at half a cent. So this has plenty of upside. Uh, it's just not one that I really follow because it is a video game. Uh, but if I was to look at it, it's really likely to trade um, back to the upper 80 cent, around 90 cents, and then possibly go all the way back up to around the uh, three, would be one $3 range, the upper $3 range, and then ultimately up to above 550 range in the future. So that's like a 10 times uh, return you could possibly see. And this was like one of those ones that could spike way up real quick and come out of nowhere. Um, but again, it's a video game, uh, kind of risky, but if you wanted to take a chance on one like this, I would say at 50 cents and under, this is a great trade all the way back to about $5. And um, yeah. I'd say it would be a worthwhile risk. You can get a, like maybe a 10 times, 9, 10 times your money on a trade like that, and then that'd be a bad risk. And the volume is improving. If we go to the daily, you can see it over here. It started to really flip around here. And yeah, I, I think from this, from where it's currently at, if you wanted a long term trade that you would see a return on, um, I do not know a great deal about this company, but the way I would trade it is I would take half off at a, when it doubled in price and let the rest run for if I can get five or dollars or more if you wanted a long term trade, that would make more sense. So up here is one line around the 370 mark, and then all the way back above here from the five and here ultimately. The upper five dollar range. So that's my. Uh, those are my ideas for the week. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Again, I'll have another video out very shortly um, on the brokers that I like, and uh, uh, maybe dollar cost averaging. How one of the ways that I allocate money for that, and uh, my thinking on it, uh, because it's very good to do, especially when you're in a. a a flat market with a, a bearish flat market, which is kind of like what we're in. Um, trading wise, it's not very, um, you have to really hunt out there for opportunities. So anyway, I will see you in the next video. Have a great week.